grace and peace and good morning to you and welcome 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 to fire in the morning we are praising god this morning thanking god hallelujah for this awesome and blessed thursday morning we are praising god for this is the day that the lord has made and we are already rejoicing and we are glad 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 in it hallelujah amen this morning amen we are picking up amen and finishing up our uh series that we have been doing this week amen we've been talking about being unshakable amen and so on monday praise god we talked about being unshakable amen we talked about amen uh uh overcoming double-mindedness Praise God. And then Tuesday, we, we, we talked about being unshakable, aiming for stability. Then yesterday was breaking the power of indecision. And today we are finishing up, amen, breaking the power of indecision. Hallelujah. And so we talked, amen, yesterday, amen, um, about those ways that that uh, instability affects our life. Because you cannot think that instability is not going to affect your life. But we talked about three ways that uh, instability makes you, or indecision, excuse me, makes you unstable. We talked about it causes unstable emotions, unstable relationships, and unstable spiritual life. Amen. And so we want to pick up from there. Amen. Going back to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, just want to refresh your memory concerning what uh, verse we ended on. We're going back to chapter 1. And and really all week we've just been on James chapter 1, uh, verses 2 through uh, 11. That's Those are about the verses that we've been through. And then we also were in uh, James chapter 4, just in case you missed any of the series. James chapter 4, amen, and, and verse 8. And so... This morning, we want to re- revisit James chapter 1, amen, and let's look at verse 4, 1 and 4, and it says, But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering for he that wavereth is like the wave of a sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways verse 9 says let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted but the rich in that he is made low because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat but it withereth the grass and the flower thereof falleth and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways and so we made emphasis on yesterday praise god on verse five if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not And it shall be given to him. We talked about asking God for wisdom. You know, that's something that is difficult for us because, you know, we don't sometimes want to humble ourselves and admit that we need wisdom. Amen. And, and. If you don't have it, you need to ask for it. Amen. We talked about, you know, um, I may mention to you all on yesterday about, you know, if you had not, you need to read or watch the video on Pilgrim's Progress. Amen. And the man, excuse me, that's listed in Pilgrim's Progress, Mr. F- Mr. Both Ways, Mr. Face Both Ways, Facing Both Ways is, is what his name is. And so, um, you know. This person in in Pilgrim's Progress represents the the man that wants to do his will and wants to do God's will at the same time. This is the man that is double minded. This is the man that uh, is, is what James is talking about. Amen. This man that is unstable in all his ways. The one who knows to do what is right, but still does wrong. 
anyway. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to live for two people. And you cannot live for two people. You can't live for yourself and live for God at the same time. Amen. We got to learn how to, to, to live for God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we talked about the fact that the problem that we are facing is indecision. Amen. What is the solution? The solution to our indecision is to ask God for wisdom. Amen. Ask God for wisdom. You have to admit that you have a need. You must confess. Amen. That you need. The scripture says if any of you lacks wisdom, he says, Ask God if you don't have it, if you know you don't have it together, if you know that you're having issues, if you know, you know what I'm saying, that that wisdom is the or the lack thereof is the issue that you are facing. Humble yourself. Go to God. You know what I'm saying? And ask him for wisdom. Now, we're not talking about just asking God for knowledge because asking for wisdom and asking for knowledge is two different things. OK, wisdom is knowledge that is put into practice. Can I say? that again wisdom is knowledge that is put into practice amen wisdom is seeing life from god's point of view not just your own but god's point of view wisdom is also making decisions the way that god would have us to make decisions it is obeying his voice amen and then doing what he would have us to do versus what we would want to do ourselves the word for wisdom in the Greek, amen, is the word Sophia, okay? Um, phila Sophia equals the word philosophy, okay? The love of wisdom. Wisdom means practical application of knowledge. And so when we look at this in scripture, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about exercising wisdom using wisdom and just wisdom in general you know but but a lot of times we're not really looking or interested in receiving wisdom a lot of times we just want knowledge a lot of times we just want information you know the world itself is impressed with how much we know how much knowledge we have but god is not impressed with your knowledge god is impressed with you you know what i'm saying receiving wisdom amen and then putting wisdom into practice it is important hallelujah amen that we put wisdom into practice amen what do you do with your knowledge you know what I'm saying? Do you put it into practice? Do you make use of it? Wisdom is that ability to make a decision the way that God would make decisions. Wisdom is that ability to take what you know, amen, and put it into practice, amen. Can I give us another verse of scripture? I know that we have been looking at James all week, amen, but looking at Proverbs chapter 11, hallelujah, Proverbs chapter 11, amen. Verse 2, it says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. So, so what is this verse saying? This is telling us that the spirit of pride blocks wisdom from even coming in. The spirit of pride blocks wisdom from entering in. It blocks wisdom from even, you know what I'm saying, being put into practice. Okay? You can't learn something if you already think that you know it all anyway. You have to be open to God having his way in your life and, and ministering to you. Your heart has to be open. Your mind has to be open. Your spirit has to be open. One of the reasons why we never learn, you know, wisdom is that we think we got it all together already. That's that's the difficulty. What do we say? The problem was with indecision. The prop well, the problem is indecision. What's the solution? Wisdom is the solution to indecision. For us to get this wisdom, but you got to be open to it. You have to admit that you lack wisdom. Amen. And then that is going to be the open door for God to be able to move for you, to be able to, amen, to be able to pour into you. Proverbs 11 and 2 again says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. When you humble yourself, then wisdom can come into operation. You can receive the impartation of wisdom amen so you have to admit that you don't have it all together you have to admit that you don't have all the answers amen and for some people that is really hard it's hard 
You know what I'm saying? And and you know, for sometimes for a husband to go home to his wife and say, you know what, honey, I was wrong. Or for a wife to say to her husband, honey, you know, I was wrong. I missed it. You know, I didn't get all I, I thought I had the answer, but I didn't really have the right answer. I did this wrong, you know, or 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 I'm sorry. You know, what you said to me was correct. You know, when was the last time? Come on, take personal inventory. When was the last time that you said that you were wrong? See, and us being able, and I know for us now, go back to Proverbs 11 and 2. 11 and 2, when pride comes, then comes disgrace. But when you, with humility comes wisdom. Okay? Humility shows us how to say that we have done wrong. All right? It shows us how wise we are. The, the admission that comes from our mouth that we don't have all the answers. You know what I'm saying? And even for us to say, I don't even know all the questions. I know I don't have all the questions and I definitely don't have all of the answers. That's the key to wisdom for us. That's the key for wisdom to be able to come in. How are we going to conquer this indecision? Being able to, to stay stable, be stable in our heart and our mind. We got to have our hearts open. We got to be able to hear God. We got to be able to receive of God. Amen. And of his spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Open your heart so that God can speak to you. Amen. Go to God and say, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. Father, I need your wisdom. I need your your leading. I want to be able to be led for, by you. Amen. Go to God and admit that you don't know all the answers. Confess your need for God. Nobody can help a man or a woman that does not even admit that they have a need. Hallelujah. Okay. So the, this is what we're doing. We're going to God. We're asking for wisdom. Amen. We're praying. We're talking to God. Amen. Verse, verse five tells of any man lacks wisdom. He should ask God. How do you get wisdom? Not by reading your favorite magazine, not by, you know, just even reading the scripture, not by watching TV, not by taking a smart pill. Okay. The Bible says that you get wisdom by asking God. To give you wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. Wisdom, amen, does not just come, you know, because you're around intellectual people. Wisdom comes from God. It is a byproduct of, of being in relationship with God and praying and seeking him. And God will give you wisdom. Okay? So when you go to God, ask him to give you wisdom wisdom and he will give it to you let's go look at proverbs chapter 2 okay proverbs chapter 2 verse 6 it says it is the lord who gives wisdom from him comes knowledge and understanding can i read that once again proverbs 2 and 6 it is the lord who gives wisdom hallelujah it is the lord who gives wisdom let me go back because i just lost my space while i was looking it is the Lord who gives wisdom. I just lost my space. You know how you're looking at, at your at your um at your Bible and you're looking at stuff. Amen. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> Hallelujah. You lose your space because I'm, I'm looking at 50 things at the same time. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 2 and 6. All right, here we go. It is the Lord who gives wisdom. From him comes knowledge and understanding. Okay. And so, so think of it like this. If God was to come to you one day, you know, and say, listen, uh, 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 Sally, or whatever your name might be, I'm going to give you one thing if you could ask me for one thing that you know that you need more above anything else. You know what I'm saying? What would you ask him for? You could ask God, you know, anything that that's your heart's desire. Like like with like like Solomon, okay? Like God came to Solomon and asked him, "What would you what do you want me to do for you? I'm going to give you whatever is your heart's desire." You know, 
And and so when we read that in scripture, we see that, you know, here's Solomon, he's the king of Israel, you know, and God is telling him, I want you to I want you to ask me what is on your heart. What do you desire? What do you want the most of? What can I give you? What can I do for you? This is the God of the universe. This is God of heaven, the creator of everything. You know what I'm saying? Who put Solomon in position. And so here's God coming to you, and he said the same thing to you that Solomon uh that he said to Solomon. What what would you say think about it now here is Solomon who has everything he's the king and what does he say Solomon after he had a chance to think after he had a chance to ponder all the things in the world that he could ask Solomon comes to the conclusion of his own inadequacy he comes to the conclusion about how much he is lacking he asks God above everything else Lord I don't want you to increase my territory. I don't want you to make me the greatest king in the whole world. I don't want you to give me more and more riches. I don't want you, you know, to, he didn't even ask God to extend the legacy of his, of his kingdom. He said, Lord, I don't know what to do with these people. These are your people. And God, I want wisdom. I want your wisdom to be the kind of king that you want me to be. Think about that. Some of us, you know, we would do Jesus like he was a genie in a bottle. And we would blow our wish on something frivolous. We would, we would ask God for our favorite car. We would ask God for a million dollars. You know what I'm saying? Instead of asking for something that is so needful, something that is so important that we receive. Amen. Solomon thought about that thing. He said, Lord, I need your wisdom. He did what, what James chapter 1 and verse 5 says. If you are lacking wisdom, ask God and he will do it. You know, Solomon was saying, Lord, I want to be able to think like you think. I want to see things from your point of view. I want to be able to lead in the way that you would have me to lead. I don't want to make too many mistakes. I already know I'm man. I'm fallible. I know I'm going to make mistakes, but I don't want to make too many mistakes. I want to be able to see from your vantage point. I want to be able to operate. Amen. From wisdom. I don't want to look back on my life later, Lord, and have regrets. I want to be able to say that I led God's people the way that I should have led them. I want wisdom. And, and the, the Bible tells us that when Solomon did this, when Solomon went to God and asked him for wisdom instead of anything else, the Bible says that God was pleased with his request. And not only did God give him wisdom, amen. Praise God, but God blessed him and made him the wealthiest man um, that, that, that lived. He made him, you know, the, the, the Bible says there has never been a king. Amen. That has been like Solomon since Solomon. Amen. Since the days of Solomon. So God gave it to him. Amen. And just like that, just like God gave Solomon wisdom, God will give anybody who comes to him and seeks him for wisdom. God will give you that wisdom. So if God came to you and he said, what do you want more in your life than anything else? What would you say? What would you ask for? If you don't ask for anything else, beloved, you need to ask God for wisdom. Hallelujah. Because we understand from looking at the scripture how important it is for us to have wisdom in our life. Our dilemma is indecision. This is why we can't make good decisions. We can't, we can't, we don't have good practice on how we exercise wisdom in life and how we make good decisions because we don't have that wisdom that we need. And instead of us going to God, Sometimes we would rather, we would rather just, you know, sit back and not make the decision or make a bad decision. Don't make a bad decision, you know, or, 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 or vacillate between opinions because you don't know what to do. Go to God, ask him for wisdom. Ask God for the wisdom that you need. And the thing about it is I don't understand what the problem is. We know that we belong to God. We know that we're going to face situations that we don't know what to do. How can you be too proud to go to God and ask him for wisdom? You cannot be a know-it-all because you do not know it all. 
and and here's the thing. Let's let's go to James. Let's go to James chapter four, okay? Because we talked about four and eight. But can we can we look at something? We read some of the beginning verses, amen, in chapter 4. Verse 2 says, Ye lust and ye have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. You don't have wisdom. You don't have the things that you need from God because you're not going to him and ask him. And, and, you know, if you do a count, you will find out that there are 20 times in the New Testament alone, 20 times in the New Testament where the Bible declares to us, ask and it shall be given. And this word in the Greek literally means to ask and keep on asking, to be persistent, to be continual, to not stop until you get what, God, what you're asking God for. There is nobody that if you are a believer, if you are, if you are a leader, especially if you're a leader in ministry, you should not do anything. If you are a business person and you have, you have a business that you're running and you do a marketplace ministry, you should not, you, just like a pastor, just like any, you know, a Christian counselor, just like any church leader, just like, you know, Anybody that is in, in the faith, you cannot and you should not do anything, nothing. Don't make any choices. Don't, don't, don't set any balls in motion until you ask for wisdom from God. Hallelujah. And just like it is the shepherd's responsibility to be able to know what God's will is and then to deliver that will to the people of God, you who are business owners, you who are teachers, you who are parents, you who are, are spiritual leaders and, and Christian counselors and whatever it is that you might do, your responsibility is to go to God, get his mind, and then take it to the people of God. Or even if you're working with ungodly people, you should still be operating in wisdom. And when you go to God and you ask, like verse 2 says in chapter 4, amen, then guess what? You should be expecting, you should be in anticipation that whatever I'm asking God for in faith, he is going to do it. You should be waiting on that answer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us that when we pray, if we ask, if we lack wisdom and we ask God, he gives generously to everybody. And he's not going to find any fault in you just because you came to him and asked him for wisdom. God will give you what you are asking, but you got to ask and believe and you cannot doubt. Can I say that? Can you write that down? Can you put that on a sticky and put it on your mirror in the bathroom? Put it on the mirror in your bedroom. Write it in your journal. Put it as a screenshot on your, on your cell phone. Do not doubt. You want wisdom? You want to be delivered from indecision? Do not doubt. You got to rebuke the spirit of doubt. Hallelujah. Push doubt out the way. You got to doubt your doubts. If you want wisdom, you got to first go to the one who has it. You're not going to always, you're not going to get wisdom all the time from your BFF. The scripture told us, amen, in Proverbs, that wisdom comes from God. It comes from God. How are you going to deal with life circumstances? How are you going to deal with your issues? Wisdom. Hallelujah. Submitting yourself to God. Getting in his presence and waiting for him to show you what to do. Giving you the right answer. Hallelujah. God is able and he wants to give us the right answer. But what you got to do is you got to be open. You got to be, amen, listening. You got to be receptive. Nobody's going to give anybody anything if they're not receptive. And on top of that, you got to believe. Put it on your, put it anywhere you want to put it. Put it on a sticky, put it on your steering wheel. Do not doubt. Remember, we're dealing with being unshakable. And at the root of us not being able to receive is double-mindedness. Not being single in our focus, not being single in our heart. And if we deal with that spirit, hallelujah, amen, that we can conquer everything else that stands in our way. 
Hallelujah. Amen. So you got to ask and then you ask the right way. What's the right way? By asking in faith. Don't doubt. Amen. And so what is your, what's the key to you getting wisdom? Asking God, staying in prayer, asking until you receive, knocking until God opens the door, seeking until you find it, being in position, not moving until you see God move on your behalf, being consistent consistent until you see what you're asking God for. I don't care how long it takes. You might feel like, okay, well, I need God to answer me right now. Well, get on your face right now and ask God for what it is that you need. And you wait. You wait in his presence. Don't you do nothing. Don't you let the the the, the, the constraints of, of and the pressures of, of right your right now move you from the place of seeking God. Don't you dare go make a decision without getting in his presence presence don't ever feel like well i gotta hear make the decision i gotta just go ahead and do this no get on your face stop what you're doing and begin to pray and say god give me your wisdom father help me to operate in wisdom your word declares that wisdom comes from you you said god that pride blocks lord god for me being able to receive but humility opens the way for me to be able to receive wisdom so god i humble myself and i come in your presence and i ask you for wisdom Hallelujah. Have you ever had taken the time to go and pray, you know, and then you sit down and maybe have a conversation with a friend or whatever. And you'd be like, I didn't even think really that God was going to release that thing that I was asking for. You set yourself up. If you don't believe that you're going to receive it, why are you asking? Didn't we just read that in, in James chapter 4 verse 2? You have not because you ask not. Then he talked about asking amiss. We dealt with that a couple of days ago as well. Asking for stuff that you want to consume upon your lust. Hallelujah. Listen to me. I don't care what your circumstances are. I don't care how hard you think it might be. Amen. But God specializes in doing what everybody else says impossible. Amen. My former pastor used to have a saying that about people who were sick. And he would say what the doctors cannot do is just right for God. What, what what you can't do, what the specialists can't do, hallelujah, is just right for God. No matter what, let's crush the spirit of indecision. Let's come against us sitting back, amen, and not being able to be single in our heart and single in our mind and being able to deal with life and running from life, amen, and running from life's issues. You got to be able to deal with this thing. Hallelujah. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So listen to me. If we're going to be able to come against all of this, we got to get back to the place of faith. Get back to the place, amen, of believing God. Remember, we don't want to be like that man who is double souled. He got two souls. Hallelujah. We want to be the man or the woman of God. And when I say man, I mean, you know, uh, 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 creation. Hallelujah. I'm not talking gender. We want to be the man of God that believe God, that stand on God's word, trusting him. Not two souls, not going after two things. Mr. Face two ways. That's not who we want to be. We want to, amen, have one heart be set in our direction, amen, which is going after God, believe in God. Remember Peter, when, 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 when Peter looked out on the water and he saw Jesus and he said, G he said, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come out here and walk on the water with you. And the Bible says that, Pete, that, that, that Jesus said, it is me. Come on out here. I'm here. And the Bible says that Peter went out and started walking on the water, but then he took his eyes off Jesus and started sinking. The moment that you start, you take your eyes off Jesus, the moment that you start looking at your circumstances, that opens the door for indecision. Now you don't know whether you're going to trust God. Now you don't know whether, amen, that the same God that bid you to come out on the sea is able to keep you walking on the water. Well, if he asked you, if he told you to come on out there, Amen. And you was able to stand there one time. You can stand there again. Hallelujah. There is nothing ever too hard for God. The scripture tells us that 
Anybody who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. That's not what we want to be. Just getting blown back and forth. Amen. Today I believe. I believe God. I step out on the sea. And then next thing I know I'm sinking. And then next thing I know. You know what I'm saying? I'm crying out to God again. Then I'm waiting for my faith to get charged. And once my faith gets charged. Then I believe God again. And then the wind blows again. And then I start doubting God again. And then I don't know if God's going to do it. I don't know if God's going to answer my prayer. I don't know if God's going to work it out. I don't know if God's going to make a way. Listen to me. You got to be decisive. Come against the spirit of indecision. Come against that double spirit soul amen and stand in faith believing god so if you're going to receive anything from god then you have got to stand in faith you got to you got you cannot waver hallelujah you cannot waver and then you got to know that you know that you know that what you ask god for he's going to do it he is going to give it the scripture again says if any man lacks wisdom he should ask god who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him god wants to give you wisdom he wants to answer your prayer he wants to make a way for you he's eager to do it Hallelujah. Just like it pleased God to give Solomon wisdom, it pleases God when we come to him and ask for wisdom and he gives it to us. He wants to give it to us. It's God's nature to give. Hallelujah. He says that, and listen, this is how he says that he's going to give you this wisdom. Number one, he said, God, God says he's going to do it continually. Ask and God, the God who gives in the Greek, that word means that's a continuance uh, tense. That means it's constant. He's not going to just give it to you one time. He's going to continue to give you. Um, he's going to continue to give you wisdom. He gives it and keeps on giving it. He doesn't run out of the ability to give you wisdom. He never wears out. He never tires of it. He's going to give you wisdom once and he's going to continue to feed it to you. And how does he give it? Generously. His resources are unlimited. God is not limited like we are. His resources are unlimited. He has enough wisdom and enough resources to feed everybody that comes to him and ask him. He's got more than enough. So he's not going to ever run out. And guess what? The scripture says he does it without finding fault. He's not looking at you and saying, I knew this devil needed something. I knew this person with their crazy self was going to come to me. He, he's doing it and he's it's, it's joyful. God is joyful about being able to give you what is in your heart to receive from him. And he's not doing it grudgingly. He's doing it, amen, because it pleases him. Amen. God does not give wisdom the way men gives things to us. He loves to give us the things that we ask for, especially wisdom. It, Like we just said, it is in his nature to do it. So you don't ever have to feel embarrassed. You don't ever have to feel ashamed. You don't ever have to feel like you can't go to God. You don't ever have to feel like God is not going to give you wisdom. You know what I'm saying? He is. There's never, ever, ever going to be a hesitation for God to pour out his wisdom on you. He wants to do it. It's his desire. It's his pleasure to do so. And he does not resent you as his son coming to him and asking for the wisdom that you need. Hallelujah. So if we want to be and we want to be Christ like then what we need to do is we need to learn how to go to God and receive of him so that the God who gives continually, the God who gives generously, the God who gives cheerfully, amen, pours into us and then we can in turn, amen, reciprocate that and do be that way with those that are around us. Hallelujah. And, and and let's talk really real quickly, amen, as we get ready to close, let's talk about this right here. You got to understand that, you know, some of us without indecision, we're thinking that God is going to make the decision for us. He's not going to make the decision for you. He's going to give you the wisdom to show you how to navigate and what you should do. He's going to give you the wisdom, amen, and show you how to choose. Hallelujah. And so some of this is, you know, he's not going to take your free will from you. And that's what, that's what, you know, 
what we don't realize sometimes. He's not coming down. He's not going to hold your arm, tie your arm behind your back and say, now do what I said do. He's going to give you wisdom. And then he's going to give you the ability to choose what is right. Hallelujah. He's giving you your free will, which is a huge responsibility. And so now you have to choose to walk in the wisdom that he has given to you. And that wisdom says that you have to make the decision to choose the right way once he's given you the way. When you see the way, walk therein. Hallelujah. And a lot of times what we do is by default, we're like, oh, well, I don't know what to do. So we end up just saying, you know, I'm just putting it in God's hand. I'm just going to trust God. And really, in, re in reality, most people, they're not really trusting God. They're just that just means that I don't know what to do. And since I don't know what to do, I'm not going to do anything. Hallelujah. And that means that you're looking for God to make the decision for you because of fear Amen. Or because you are a poor decision maker or because you are dealing with indecision or because you are double minded. But you got to understand you are the one that has to make the decision. God has entrusted you with with whatever your circumstance is right now, whatever the trouble is that you're facing, whatever the question is that you are facing. He's got the answer. Go to him and get the answer. But don't look for him to make the decision for you. You got to make the decision. He's going to show you, give you wisdom and know what to choose. Know what direction to go in. And remember, when you're going to get wisdom, it's going to be found in his word. It's going to be found in his presence. Amen. Psalm 119 and, 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 and 5, 105 excuse me, says that God's word is the lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God will show us the way. Get in his word. Let his word show you the way. Let his, his presence show you the way. Go to God. Ask him. Don't worry about what other people think. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't worry about how other people are choosing. You do your part. Go to God. Ask him for wisdom. Believe him. Come against unbelief. Rebuke the spirit of doubt. Amen. Ask him for the wisdom. Ask him for how you should choose. And then as he leads you, make the decision. Don't be stuck with indecision. Don't feel like, well, if I just don't do anything, then I don't have to worry about anything. No, you. there are things that you have to make decisions about. There are things that you are in your life that you're going to face. You got if you are a boss, you're going to have to hire somebody. So you have to make a decision after you do your interviews and you see who needs the who's best for the job. You got to choose. Amen. You this there's, there's times when you're going to have to choose what direction you're going to go. There's times when you're going to have to make the decision about how, what direction your business is going to go in. What direction your ministry is going to go in. What, what things, you know, you, you're going to have to make decision about what things you're going to do in ministry with your family, with, with your, with your relationships. Hallelujah. So don't back off from making decisions, no matter how hard they are. Go to God, get the wisdom that you need. Trust him, stand in faith. Amen. Go to God and let him pour into you. Amen. Continually the wisdom that you need in order for you to be able, amen, to stand, amen, and to make the right decisions. Today, we break the power of indecision, amen, and the lack of faith that accompanies indecision today we break the power amen of fear that accompanies indecision today we break the power hallelujah of pride that stands in the way of wisdom in the name of Jesus and we declare and decree today that nothing shall keep us from this continuous stream of wisdom that God wants to pour out in us amen that we could make the right decisions for him his glory that we would be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might hallelujah and that our quality of life will be increased because of the decisions and the choices that we make and that wisdom will be behind every choice and every decision that we make for the glory of God 
and we silence every spirit of the enemy right now that will speak to us, that will try to make us vacillate between two opinions. Everything that the enemy was saying to try to cause us, hallelujah, amen, to be stuck and to be indecisive. We plead the blood against that today. Hallelujah. And we stand strong in the Lord and we say, God, we believe your word. Hallelujah. You said if we lack wisdom, that you would pour it out on us continuously. So we ask you today to give us your wisdom so that we can make the right decisions and give us the grace, the faith, the strength to make the decisions that we need to make. Hallelujah. No matter what the consequence in Jesus name and God, we bless you for it. We give you glory for it. We magnify you for it right now. God, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for it right now. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you God for this word today. We thank you for your word that speaks to us. We thank you God for bringing us to the place of operating in wisdom for operating oh god in faith for operating oh god in assurance of your word knowing that we have the petitions that we ask for and that we don't ask amiss we ask according to your will and according to your word in the name of jesus and god we bless you for it right now we give you glory glory we give you honor we magnify you lord in jesus name amen and amen listen i know that we went over a little bit this morning hallelujah but i know that god wants us to be able to break this power and i believe that the power of indecision is broken off our life we are unshakable we will not be moved from our place of destiny we will not be moved from what god has called us to do and we will definitely hallelujah not allow indecision to have power over us another day but whatever choices we have to make today as we go to work as we amen prepare for our day whatever it is that you have to do today indecision is not going to be a stumbling block for you today i declare over you today hallelujah that the wisdom of the Lord, hallelujah, migrates to your spirit today and that your heart, amen, will be strengthened to be courageous in the things of God and be able to make the decisions that you have to make for the glory of God and that the spirit of fear is broken off of you, hallelujah, that the spirit of unbelief is broken off of you and you can stand in faith knowing that God is with you and he will continually pour out wisdom on you and in you and through you amen and direct your paths in the way that you should go in jesus name we thank god for you hallelujah we thank god for being able to stoke our fire this morning we thank god for being able praise god to be able to set our focus today that we will not be in decision and be in indecision and that we are indeed unshakable and there is nothing that can stand in our way to prevent us from being able to do what God wants us to do and that God is going to get the glory out of us today. Can you make that declaration? God is going to get the glory out of my life today and that there's nothing that's going to stand in my way to prevent me from being able to make the right decisions today. Amen. That I'll be bold enough to amen, make the decisions, praise God, and not worry about what nobody else is going to say about it. Whatever the repercussions are, oh well, that's what it is. But God is with me in Jesus name. I pray the Lord bless you and keep you and turn his face towards you, give you peace. Be strengthened today. Hallelujah. Be amen. Stand in faith today. Be decisive today in Jesus name because you are unshakable in Jesus name. Have a blessed day. Thank you for joining us this morning. Join us tomorrow as we stoke our fires at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with fire in the morning. God bless you. Israel, lift up a prayer, lift up a cry, lift up a prayer for Israel.